for 30. I want you all to put your hands together and welcome our host today, Melissa Armo, www.thescottswitch.com. Melissa, please take over the microphone. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Let me know if everybody can hear me. Let me know if everybody can see the chart here today. Okay, very good. You should see a chart of CMG. So plan of action today is I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Instead of talking with a PowerPoint today, I'm going to talk about charts. The topic for today's webinar was to learn a strategy that you can use to short to make money in the market. And how can you make money shorting? Well, you've got to find stocks, okay, that are dropping in price. The only way you're going to make money short is if you find stocks that are moving lower. And so that is very, very key. And, and as interestingly enough, even though I'm not going to talk about going long today, you can make money going long. And I'm just going to uh, show you briefly here the chart of the market because it had a really nice bullish move today. Actually, look at this. We got over 249 <laughs> anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the market here before I start into the shorts because once you learn how to spot weakness once you learn what to short and become an expert in shorting which I am then you will also more easily be able to see longs or what's bullish or particularly what stocks are strong or in the case here of the market which is the spiders what ETFs are strong this is an ETF okay so I think it is very important if you want to be successful trading to have a focus. When I first first started trading, I ended up doing gap, uh, and it was a it was a gap that was trading low. It was a, it was a short, and I made a lot of money, and that's how I got into shorts in the first place. The one thing that I love about shorting stocks, whether you do options or swing trades or day trades, is that when panic comes into a stock. It can happen very, very quickly, almost like a, like a train wreck, okay? Like a train running out of control type of action. And that's selling. Now let's look at here at this. This is CMG, Chipotle, okay? This stock has fallen almost completely straight down vertical ever since all the way back here in June. In fact, let's look at the whole chart here where the previous high was at one point. 2015, everybody knows this place, okay? It's a restaurant. They're all over the place in New York. Looks like this got up to 758.49. This is all the way back, summer 2015. Now, that was a very high price for the stock. What did it do? It had a gap down that happened here then in the fall of that year. Okay, do you see where this is? I squished these bars together here because I'm trying to show you something. If you knew how to read gaps, and I'm gonna go over what a gap is here in a moment, and I'm gonna blow this up so you can see the bars better. But if you knew my strategy and how to read gaps, you could have traded this, just this one stock, okay, to the downside a, a ton of days in the last two years, because really this was like the fall of 2015. It's September 2017, okay. And you could have done this stock. You could have bought puts. You could have shorted it as a swing trade. You could have done a million day trades in this, okay? And that would be the right thing to do, okay? Going long anywhere in here would be almost a disaster because the stock has collapsed. It has lost actually more than 50% of its value in the last two years. Now let's go back and I'm going to briefly describe to those of you that are brand brand new what a gap is if you don't know. I'm going to go back to that one that started the whole thing from two years ago. Now this is a chart, a daily chart where you can see the candlesticks. Let me go back. Here it was. So this is two years ago, 2015. The stock ran up here. 758.49 was a high in August. The stock gap down. Now, if you don't know what a gap is, I'm going to tell you right now. 
The stock closed here the night before. The market closes at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Close of this bar here in the night of was 705.63. Boom. Then it gapped down. Now, what is a gap down? Or a gap up, but we're just going to talk about gap downs today. When a stock or an ETF closes at 4 o'clock and opens at a different price the next day at 9.30, that's a gap. So this could close at whatever I just said, 705.63 and open at any price lower than 705.63 it would be considered a gap down. Now in the case of this guy here, it gapped down and open where? 665.67. So that's pretty noticeable, okay? But I want you to see something here. I'm gonna blow it up again. On the live day, the stock rallied. On the live day, actually, no, the open was 650.60. I was looking at the close. It opened at 650.60, rallied up, closed at 665. So the stock actually gapped down 50 bucks plus from the open, but it rallied on the live day. But guess what? It fell then every day since. So this day here in October 2015, the day in the morning when the stock opened in the gap down, and again, let me get the price right, it opened at 650. On the day it rallied, but it wasn't a buy. Now, if you went long this on this day, particularly on this day, could you have made money theoretically as a day trade? Yes. Would that have been the right thing to do? No. Why? Because you would have been watching this to short. Now, whether this would have rated well per my system to short or not as a day trade or even set up intraday, you don't know until the stock opens and trades. But do you see here how it really was a short? Okay. And anyways, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go back in time here this far back this many years, but it would have rated well as a gap, as a gap down to short. And if you had looked to do it. You would have done it as a follow-through trade. The following day, it sold off like crazy. And then it broke. And then it gapped down again and gapped down again and gapped down again. So I'm trying to show you the transition here, what happened with this stock. And why am I using this as an example? Because shorting is something that can be extremely profitable because when panic comes into a stock, it kind of almost never looks back unless, unless what? Somebody try to finish my sentence here so you understand my, my logic train of thought. When, when panic comes into a stock, it goes out of control until or unless what happens? Anybody want to guess? Don, what do you think? When panic comes into something, it goes out of control to the downside until what? Galahad, guess, somebody, Barry. Here we go. Eclipse Trader has a guess. Reassurance that big money is buying it also. That's a very good answer for a new person. A plus plus to Eclipse Trader, who signed up for the class this weekend but hasn't even done the class yet. So obviously Eclipse Trader gets the concept. Bogey says it hits support, but Bogey, there's a bazillion supports. How do you know which support is going to hold? This day here, it held this support, but it didn't last long. Broke it, broke it. Gap down here, this day held this prior support. Broke it, broke it, broke it. There's like 100 gazillion supports. So no, you can't say until it holds support because how do you know which support it will hold? And I'm going to go back to the market in a minute because it's a good example of the opposite of this chart here, of the opposite. And again, go with my, with my train of logic here. If you can see weakness and learn to read that really well, you're going to be able to learn strength well too, okay? So it's the opposite, but it's the thought process of what you're going to understand when it's not coming in, when the buying isn't coming in, which it wasn't coming in here, okay? Barry says oversold. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Daryl says exhaustion. I think him and Barry are thinking the same tr line of thought. But again, how do you know when that is? Let me just blow this up again here to today's because this thing here, and I, I, and I literally haven't looked at this for a little while here. I'm just looking at this today. This thing here, do you think this is exhausted here? Barry and Daryl. 
Do you think that CMG cannot go any lower right now for the near short term future in the next couple of days or weeks? Do you think that this is exhausted? What do you think? Barry, do you think it's oversold? In fact, let's look at what happened today. The stock fell on Friday, gap up today with the market rallied. Barry says, no, no, you don't think it's oversold. What determines exhaustion? Do you see, it's like, it's too, it, 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 it's, the, you can't, you can't determine that. It's too indeterminate. It's too uh, willy nilly. It's, it's, it's to your opinion. It's to anybody's opinion. It's whatever that you can't trade based on what you think is oversold or overbought or exhausted or can keep going. You've got to actually be more specific. Okay. Which is, which is what I do, which is what I'm looking at the stocks that are gapping. And particularly if we're just going to look at CMG tonight here, I'm going to look at the gaps in this chart. Okay. Which we're going to talk about which there was a gap on Friday. There was a gap back here in June, but let's go back to the one I was talking about earlier that started the whole shebang from two years ago. I have a system where I'm looking at the gap. The gap is a strategy, and by the rating system that I, I look at, and this is what I teach in my class, I'm making a decision based on the point if I think it will keep going lower or not. So I look at 26 points on a chart. If it's gapping down and it rates 20 points or more, chances are high probability that the stock will continue lower, whether it's on the day or, or, or lower in the chart in the big term picture. So that's how you know how to get in. And ultimately, the, the concept of trading, no matter what you do, is very, very simple, which is if you're in the right direction, you'll make money. If you're in the wrong direction, you'll lose. And the sooner you can get in the trade in the right direction, the more money you'll make. Because if you're chasing something up or you're chasing something down, if you're chasing it, you may have to have a quick, 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 quick exit if you get it late. Or you may have to have a terrible price. And even if you're in the right direction, you may have to hold it long for a bigger move for your risk to reward to be there. So, you know, conceptually trading is, is something that's easy if you get the direction right but you still have to get the entry right too. And in this case here in the CMG, you had a beautiful entry the day that the stock gapped down, no matter where you got it, but you had to wait to get paid because the stock didn't start to fall until the second day after the gap. And it didn't really start to get going and pay you until one week later, but it didn't take that long. And then it broke, broke, broke and fell. Now this bar here, which is a monstrous one here, I don't even remember the reason, but the high of this bar here is 614, low is 534, this is insanity, okay? 80 points or something here. This is not a gap down, but this is a huge sign of weakness in the chart, okay? And if you just look here, the stock has never gone over the high of this day. So this day here was around high of the day, 614, the stock has never gone over the high of that day. So this is follow through of the selling from the original gap. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have played this here as anything, but it would have given you the conviction to know that it really had more into it. It had more leg to go, that there was no exhaustion yet, that it wasn't holding any of these areas here that that you know Don was talking about. Now let me let me see the questions here. It depends what you use to indicate exhausted. Nothing. You're not going to make your trading decisions based on that. That's what I'm telling you. If you make trading decisions based on exhaustion, you're you're going to get tripped up because there is no there's there is no such thing. It's a matter of opinion. It's like if I say, "Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful, fabulous weather we're having here in New York. It's lovely." Some people may go outside and say, "Oh my god, this is so it's so cold. It's freezing here for this early in the year. It's it should be it should be hot out. It should be much much warmer. I have to wear a jacket now. It's this is too early to be this cold. But some people might say, "Oh my gosh, this weather is fabulous." It's a matter of opinion, okay? It's like it's like if you if you it's it's whatever you think. Because a lot of people here, uh, I'm sure, and I'm going to go over here to this one here because it really had a collapse into 2017. 
which some of it was earnings gaps and some of this fall off in this stock was new stuff. I don't even remember, like people eating food and getting sick. I don't even remember all of them. But, you know, the, 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 the big, big, big collapse really, this was this year. So here was the gap down. And we're going to talk about this one here that happened. This was in June. June, July, August, three months. This stock in three months has gone boop, like that. So anyways, to make a long story short, going back to what I was saying, you don't make trading decisions based on exhaustion. You make trading decisions based on a strategy, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. No matter what decision you take, whether you go long or short in trades, and I prefer to short, which I'm, I'm reviewing with you here too, and I'm going to explain why, but whatever you do, you have to have a strategy to do it, and it can't be based on your opinion of something that is so subjective that you that somebody else couldn't come to the same conclusion. Because if somebody here would look at this and say that this is probably exhausted in the drop off, I would say I don't feel that way at all. I would say looking at this here, this clearly looks like it's falling off a cliff. Um, and based on that, I, I would never, never go long this. Also, the idea, even if even if we could all agree, like let's just say we get up tomorrow morning and this stock is gapping down at something crazy, under 200. You roll out of bed tomorrow morning. CMG is at 200. Another person got sick. Somebody died, let's say. Something horrible happened and the stock loses 100 bucks overnight, which absolutely could happen, okay? It could lose that much overnight in a gap from something, bad news, earnings, whatever. Anyway, say that that happened, would you say it's exhausted then? See, you know, everybody would have a different answer, but the point is people play exhaustion in the reverse, meaning that they'd buy it. And somebody said in here about buying support. Well, well, 200 is the supports. So here's the support in here. Find it. Right in, right in this area. So, so would you buy the stock there though? Would you think it'd have a bounce? Would you wanna buy it? Would you wanna buy this stock here if it gapped down to 200 tomorrow morning because five people got sick eating enchiladas at, you know, at the restaurant, loses 100 bucks overnight, you think then it's exhausted, it can't possibly go down anymore, would you buy it? Would that be the right thing to do? Bogey saying today went up on low volume, so it looks like it's to keep going down. The only reason that this rally here today was because the market gapped up. Otherwise, this probably wouldn't have even done that. Anyways, okay, let's go back to the original gap. So, why short? So, the, let me just make sure I got the one point I was trying to say. Exhaustion isn't a strategy. Buying support isn't a strategy. Of course, you're going to look at things like support, like moving averages. If you can look at something and feel like it's already had a move, you could say, well, I don't want to do this maybe because, not because it's exhausted, because it's already had a big move, you don't want to chase it, and you choose to walk away from the trade, but it doesn't mean you're doing the opposite direction. And it probably could keep going anyways, even still, okay? Anyway, selling action, getting back to my original question, which Eclipse Trader did answer correctly, when selling action comes in, it keeps going, 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 going until what? It keeps falling off a cliff with a panic until something tells you that it's going to stop going down. So do you get it? An Eclipse Trader's answer was, again, reassurance that big money is buying it also. So you need to see that coming in. That gives you the confirmation if you'd want to either A, exit this as a short, if you're in it for a long-term short, like let's just say you're in a swing trade short in the CMG, or if you were short puts, you'd get the confirmation if big money came in, institutional money came in to buy it, that it was turning around. You'd either exit your short or, or, you, could buy, or you could buy it. Now, I'm going to go to this one over here because this is a good one today to discuss, which is Teva. Teva. Oh, here. This is today. Hold on. Teva had a gap down here just a couple of weeks ago, a little bit more than a month. 
This, again, panic selling. Do you see this here? How do you make money? Getting the trades in the right direction. In the case of Tiva here, the stock closed the night before gap down. You would have rated the gap using my system if you did my class and were a golden gap course student. And it would have told you, hey, this could set up as a good short. You watch it to take it to trade it on the live day. All right, you see the gap in the morning pre-market. And sometimes you see them at night. Anyways, it worked as a short, followed through here, kept going down, fell, 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 fell. Low in here was around 1522. Yes, 1522 was a low. So Tiva looks to me like, wow, it's getting selling. It looks weak. Now today, Tiva had some news, some kind of trial thing or whatever. And the market gapped up. So Tiva gapped up today on positive news, I believe, and it also gapped up with the market, and it had a green bar day. High in the day was 1924. So what do you do with this here? Again, how do you make money trading? Well, if you shorted this today as a day trade, you didn't, you didn't make any money, okay? This was not a short today. But would you have wanted to go long this? Like, you can't ignore all of this situation here, okay? Now, I want to show you something interesting about the intraday chart of this, of the TIVA. Here, I'm going to show you. Here's the 15-minute. This is the rally up in the stock. Hit a point, fell, 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 and then flatlined and pittered off right in here. Now, where does this go after this? You say, Melissa, where does this go? Well, right now, the chart still looks lower. Did it have a lift today? Yes. But again, going back to what I was saying, okay, about shorting and what's happening, things fall, 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 fall until they fall off a cliff, okay? The panic comes in. The panic keeps coming in and, 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 and the panic isn't over until when? until something's telling you that the panic is over. Do you think the panic is over in this? Somebody answer me. It stock gapped up today. It rallied on the day. Do you think that everything's fine now? It's sunny days ahead for this stock. Is the panicky over, yes or no? Galahad says not yet. Anybody else? Bogey says no. Doggy says no. Anyone, anyone f disagree with them? I don't think that the panic is over yet in this. So I would agree with the people that answered. Okay. Daryl says no too. Eclipse Trader saying, don't know unless you see the follow through. Well, that's right. You're going to wait and watch and see what happens here, for example. Okay. Now, what if the market rallies tomorrow and it's green tomorrow and gaps it again tomorrow because the market is such a bullish day today? Could this follow through for a second day? Yes. But is it going to go anywhere where it's really going to have the people coming in where they just step in like a monster? Do you, here, I'm going to blow this up. This is like, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about shorts today, but I'm going to use examples of, of, of monster buying too to show you so you can read the difference here so you can understand what I'm talking about. Big money comes in like a monster. So this isn't a monster. It's a move, okay? It got, the stock got bought up today. It did, okay? I wouldn't have bought it. But anyways, this here is, see, this is a monster. The stock closed here, 31.25, gap down, boom, open at 25.75 and fell all day into a dream target, almost got to 23, high of the day was over 26. Stock dropped $3 on the day, dropped again the next day, gap down the next day, fell hard, fell almost down to 20. A $6 move from the oh, from the high of this day to the second day and from the previous day, 31, $11 move in, you know, 48 hours. Boom, boom, boom. So this is a monster of the selling. This isn't a monster over here. Okay. And even if this has a, another little rally in here, it still wouldn't look like a monster. 
And also here's the chart. This is the chart you're looking at here of the stock. So you can really see when I squish the bars together, when, the more data I squish, you can see what I mean by the power of shorting and panicky action to profit. If, if, I could, if I could make this smaller, but I can't, this is as small as I can make it. But you see how this is almost like, if I, if I even squish this together more, it would almost look like one line down. It would almost look like, it would almost, um, shoot, I don't have a thing up to, to draw on. But it would almost look like, I could almost draw a line that would almost have no bend in it. I, th this actually has no bend in it. Look, it just went, it just went like that. Look. In fact, before today, it had absolutely no bend in it. <laughs> there, here, you can look at the moving averages. The moving averages kind of depict it easier. And these are just drawn on here. From the, you can see it just went, mm, and it went like that. Now, let me go back to this one, too, because this had a bigger move. Let me squish it. All right, going all the way back two years before, this, you know, again, if you're an overnight trader, if you're a day trader, similar concept, the strategy that I trade and teach can be used for, for looking at directional bias in, in any stock or ETF. You're playing it based on the gaps in the correct direction if the gap rates well. And in this case here, you can really see the power of panic, selling action, when a stock has made just a tremendous lift, a tremendous move, and then takes a fall just ever so quickly. As quickly as it rallied up, it lost it all and fell. And I don't think this is done yet either, okay? But you know, you watch the gaps, you rate the gaps. You could have shorted this on Friday at gap down, and it had a nice, nice move. And you could be in this for a long-term trade. So the key to making money in shorts is to finding stocks that have a panic look to them that have selling action going on in them that that look like they they are going to need help and that the help isn't coming and that's what i'm saying about the tiva and even the green day here okay this isn't help coming and i'm trying to break this down to talk about it in really common sense terms this isn't really help coming it's like, it's like these stocks should need a savior. It, it needs somebody to save them, okay? They're drowning. That's the best way to describe it. Does anybody have any questions about anything here that I'm saying at, at all? Now, I'm going to go over to what I was talking about earlier about the spy. And if you have questions, ask me here. Now, again... Shorting makes sense because the moves come in big and fast and swift. You can make money going long, okay? The reason shorting is fun, though, is because of the fact that the moves can happen very quick. And if you're day trading and you want to trade just quick trades in the morning, you can be in and out fast. And we're going to talk, we're going to look at some one minute charts here in a minute. But I want to go back to this idea of seeing something and then flipping it, okay? A couple of weeks ago, not even two weeks ago, before all this happened, this was back on here. It was only, oh, actually, almost was a month. This, this... This doesn't look like the gap in CMG or Tiva, but it is a gap. And it is valid for you to, to look at, to actually watch, to check out, or to rate, okay? So the SPY had a close here at 246.94 on the 16th. And then it opened in the morning, gapping down at 246.24. The market then power trended all day on this day and closed at the low. In fact, it closed exactly at the low. The low and the close were the same number, which is extreme weakness, 243.09. It followed through here on the next day a little bit by gapping down and falling a little, little, little. So then you had to watch it, but then it didn't, and then it recovered. So do you see here where you could be watching this thing and, 
And, and you could have shorted the market on the day as a day trade. You could have, and if you did, you made money. Now, you, if you were doing my system, you would rate this gap, and you would determine if the gap rates 20 points or more for you to short it. If it does, you could look it for a setup intraday, okay? But as far as the follow through, you did have panic on this day. Then you had a little more panic here the second day down. And, and I remember even looking at this and saying, well, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where we go here. This is really a telltale sign for the market. It will be interesting to see what happens next. But see, we nothing did. We retraced almost 100% of the move that happened then. And see, going and looking at the Tiva, I'm just going back to these two other charts here, which you've been talking about. That has not happened here at all, number one. CMG, that hasn't even, even remotely happened here at all on CMG, okay? So going back to this, do you see how it was just a temporary, you didn't have you didn't you didn't have that panic following through you immediately had somebody saving saving you or saving the spy here really the, this to me wasn't wasn't panicky but a lot of people read it that way and it could have it could have i mean it could have we could have we could have fallen all the way down all the way down in here we could have fallen 30 points 20 points 25 but i i really would have been surprised if we did that but anyways it could have you don't know so but then this happened immediately where the saviors come in and it retraces, okay? So then that tells you that no reason to panic, don't have a, you know, conniption, da, 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 da. But a lot of people do panic, okay, whenever they see red. And people also panic when they're in something that looks like this. And I'm just talking about this chart. This could be anything. This could be, a, this could be any symbol in the world. This chart itself, this is a chart of the spy. Man, we broke out today. Look at that chart. We really are higher. Um, but here, th this is a beautiful chart. So people look at this, though, and any red they panic, I'm explaining how people think. Not me, but I'm saying people. If you would be long this thing, which is the spy, but it could be anything, any symbol at all you want to give it. When people are long and they're up money and they see red, they do sometimes tend to panic because then they wonder if they should get out and if this is it. Does this make sense what I'm saying? So that is why sometimes you have bars like back on the day of the 17th and you do have selling and the selling did happen all day in the day and you have it, but it doesn't really go anywhere. You just get the people that are very excitable and they are up money and they're taking their profits and they're getting the profits and they're getting out. And, and when people are in things for a while, sometimes they're in it and this chart keeps going and they say well this can't keep going and it can't keep going and it can't keep going but it does but at the at the any little sign of the red people panic because then they think well this is the end this is the top this is it it's this is it. i better get out now this is all over that's how people think do you understand but that's not how people that are in charge of stocks and that move stocks to the market think now, any questions about anything I just said? Because I'm talking, talking, talking here, uh, but I think this is going to be a good chart lecture here for today. Any? Does anybody have any questions about anything I just said here? So far tonight. Anyone? All right, let's go look at the one from, this was two weeks ago. Because the room was closed last week for the Labor Day. Amba. Okay, here we go. No, you understand this is great? Thank you. I think so too. All right, let's go look at this guy here. Um, this was back, oh, it was, it was the first, actually. This was on, this is before the Labor Day. So, again, 
have a strategy, which cannot be exhaustion, because it, you know, it's too, it's it's too uh, opinionated and not based on enough reference that is something that could be replicated and duplicated, and that two people or ten people or twenty five people could come up with the same conclusion. Remember, you know, when when you're doing something that almost every single person or every single person comes up with the same conclusion, then then you have something to make a basis on. If it's too opinionated, okay, too much based on someone's judgment of something, yes or no, then it comes from their place of knowledge and therefore it can't be replicated where everybody can come up with the same conclusion because everybody's knowledge base is very, very different. If you come from a place where you're where you're used to seeing things back up that fall really really hard, then you you will come to the conclusion of exhaustion more so in play it than other people. So it has to do with your frame of reference, and that's why you can't trade on basic you know assumptions like things like that. You have to have a set set system, okay. That's not to say that everybody doesn't have different variances because everybody comes from a different skill set when they come and learn with me. But the system itself is has every point and you go and you total them and you look at the points and you tally them up. And everybody gets the same points. So you add them up and that's it. And that's how you follow my system. It's not subjective. Looking at things like where this, what support level it will hold, what support level or what resistance level it will hold or what resistance level it will break it's too subjective because there's way too many on a chart, number one. And number two, something like the idea of exhaustion as well, it, you, can't, you can't say it. Trading itself, okay, should not be subjective because the stock is only going to do one of two things on any given day. Rally or drop. That's it. You only got two options unless the stock is not going to move or it's halted. Stocks must move if they are open and live on the day, trading day. Unless they're halted, they must move. They can only go two ways. One is up and the second is down. That's it. So you only have two picks to play it, long or short. All right? It's, it's, not, it's not subjective. It's going to go where it's going to go. And the person that's going to be right is the one that makes the prediction and takes the trade in the right direction and makes the money before it happens. You know, after the fact, if you see, for example, the SPY trading all the way up and blowing over the high today, if you're if you're looking at that at 12 o'clock noon today, well, you didn't have to be a genius to see the market was green on the day, but you're in the trade very, very late and may have a terrible entry or stop. Now, let's get here to the AMBA, getting back to the shorts. It was a gap down. So the strategy is a gap down, and then you will rate it per my system to look for an entry. Stock closed here the night before. At 54.40, open in the morning where? Again, another monster beast. Opened in the morning at 45.93, almost 46. So looking from here to here, about eight bucks down. And there we have it. So this had a gap down and you would get up in the morning and you would look at the gap and you would rate the gap per my system to determine what to do. Is it gonna fall on the day? Is it gonna rally? Do you wanna go long it? Do you wanna short it? So my point system tells you that. Now let's go to the intraday chart. And go. you can ask me any questions while we're, while we're here because it's just very free, free flowing here tonight because I think it's, it's good to look at a lot of charts. So this is a one minute off the daily now. If you want to day trade, after you figure out that AMBO looks good lower, you say, I like it. It rates good per Melissa's system. The system tells me that this has a high probability of falling today, that the panicky action will come into the stock, okay, which it did. So you watch it. So what did it do? 9.30 in the morning, the stock opens, has a rally in live live time the stock had a move up and actually it was almost above the stock rallied in 60 seconds which happens very fast but if you watched it it did then the next bar did what 931 again we're on the one minute chart off the daily 
it did not rally and it's starting to go red and then it's starting to go really red and this is all happening into 945 okay and then it fell 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 all the way down again into 10 o'clock so I just want to show you here and again you would learn this in the class from me if you came to do the class with me you could have shorted this stock now why would you have done it you would have done it because the gap rating system here in the daily chart told you that this stock has a high probability of continuing to fall on the day but you still don't get in it until it sets up you would learn the setups with me in the class anyways this did set up and it didn't rate good and you could have watched it as a short okay here again is the panic the panic 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 and this is how you make money shorting on panic again you can make money going long i called the market long in the room today but the nice thing about shorting is that it seems to just happen just very very quickly the market did move over the high today but it took a while to get there in fact let's what time did the market let's just compare because i just want to show you here again why shorting is so great 12 30. so three hours it took three hours for the market to have the big move today this took one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen eighteen minutes if you held it all the way down if you didn't you could have get out in 10 minutes do you see how this big action took happen in 10 minutes the long bullish reaction the market had today took three hours and that's very very typical that's very very typical when you're going long you have to wait longer for the trades to go when you're going short you want to see the move quickly you want to see that panic okay but you still have to watch the right stock to do it still have to know to take the entry which are six different entries not everything sets up the same and you have to put stops but I want to show you here that this is this was a really big move if you shorted this in here and even if you got out in the first area right in here the stock moved three bucks that's a huge move if you had a thousand shares of this how much money would you have made three thousand dollars if you have two thousand shares of this and you're in this drop in the first ten minutes of the day and it drops two dollars how much you make six grand six grand in ten minutes so this is the benefit of shorting the moves happen swift and quick but the real benefit is knowing knowing my system actually to know that AMBA has a high probability of falling on the day and therefore the only thing that you could possibly do to do anything at all is what short it because you wouldn't go long it now let's look at the overall here does anyone have any questions about that let's look at the overall chart of what's happening here we say gosh just look at this thing one two three four four days up fell broke is it extended is this exhausted is it filling the gap is it gonna rally is it gonna is this done now is what's happening here what do you think everybody amba does anybody have any opinions on amba at all do you want to buy it risk the farm if you had 10 million dollars would you go long and short it amba 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 kathy you're cute <laughs> thank you yes i will be on fox business on the 13th <laughs> Does anybody, is anybody awake anymore? It's only 515 people. <laughs> Have your caffeine. Somebody needs a coffee burst. Doggy is saying 35 is the target. Galahad saying short. Eclipse Trader thinks it's going to fill the gap. Koala Bear says short. Eclipse Trader does not want to risk the farm in any direction, which is always a good idea. Do not risk the farms. <laughs> Or the pigs won't have a place and the cows won't have a place to go. Koala bear says short. Dara says short. T says resistance can't get through. 
which resistance where? Give me a price number of a level of resistance you're talking about because there's a million resistances. Which resistance level do you mean? Give me a number. <clears throat> bear flag. I don't play bear flags. I don't I I pledge allegiance to the flag. <laughs> I don't I don't play bear flags or bull flags or I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. <laughs> that's, that's the only flags that are in my vocabulary. Give me a number. <laughs> Give me a number, T. Anyways, 46. Okay, so... T thinks it's rallying up to 46. Let's find 46. Here's 46. So what do you think it's going to do if it goes there? Hold it, drop again, go over it. First of all, if you day traded this here, you made a lot of money. Second of all, if you shorted this here, second day down, you made good money too. If you did this as any kind of long-term overnight short, swing trade, put trade, you would have had to be out of a half of this trade or the whole trade or some of it. Why? One of the targets was 40 bucks. It got it. If the third day down, it reached $40. So if you, did, if you had done this for an overnight, you had to get out of either the whole trade or at least half or more because it hit the $40 target in, before it even did this thing here in the last few days. All right, before it even rallied. So you would have made money to the downside here. If you did, that was the right thing to do. If you, Let's just say you didn't. Let's say you did it as a swing trade. You didn't get out of any in here. You had in your mind a piggy target. Somebody said 35. If you had in mind a piggy, piggy target of 35 and it bounced at 40 and you didn't take out any profit in the trade if you were up, and if you'd shorted it at 46, and I'm just theoretically here, if you'd shorted it at 46, and you swore 35 or bust, you'd still be up in this trade. It's at 44.59. If you short, shorted it at 46, you'd still be up. But you wouldn't be up as much as you would have been up when it was at 40. And you got within $5 of the number, the original number you had, even though $40 really was a target. Galahad's saying it may rally up to 48. What if it does? What if it goes over T's United States flag number, 46? And what if it does go all the way up here to 48? Goes over the, the area of the previous gap down, the one that had the big move on the first, goes up to 48, goes over 46, what? Do you think then that it's turned around? that all of the panic is over, that everything looks beautiful and fabulous and amazing, would you go long the stock then if that happened? I mean, if you were still in it to the downside, obviously you would be down if you'd shorted at 46 and it does rally to 48, but hopefully you would have killed it then. And again, no one should have been in this still through that drop into 40. But would you, would you want to go long here then? Would you say all the panic is over? Galad says no way. Well, I would hope you would say no way. Okay. And again, this is this is just a sidebar here. It brings up another point. And then I'm just going to finish up what I'm just saying to answer any questions. There's, there's so many different levels of support and resistance in a stock. 46 is a resistance level. Could it go over it? Yes. If it does, does it mean that the stock isn't low or no? But if you did the trade and shorted it at 46, money management says that you really should have been out of trade into 40 or way before. And if you didn't get out of it, you, I mean, the only thing you could possibly do would be to kill it at break even if it does touch 46 because you wouldn't want to lose in a trade that you were up $6 in. That would not be good money management, okay? But it doesn't mean that the stock isn't going to break or go lower again. And the, and, the, and Tiva really is a better example because Tiva had this gap up today. And Amber really is just kind of rallying. 
Um, but I'm sure some people will look at this today and say, this is why I use this as an example too, that the move in this is done or that it's exhausted or whatever. They will say it for lots and lots of reasons. One, because it couldn't break 15. Two, because it did get up today in its own reason too. It wasn't just the market, it had news. Some kind of positive news, all right? And it didn't have a small move today. I mean, the stock actually rallied more than a buck. So, you know, that actually happened. Again, I wouldn't have called this long in the room or gone long it because the stock still looks like a piece of crap. Where does it go from here? You have to watch it and see. But there's still plenty of panic in this, all right? And that's when you're when you're looking to short and you're looking to get in a trade and you're looking to play it no matter what you want to do and i'm going to go back to the cmg whether you want to go whether you want to do the day trades or whether you want to do the options trades which really in an ideal world you do them all but if you have a if you if you if you have a set time if your time is limited where you can trade where you can't be in the room or you can only be in the room you can't watch options i mean depending on what happens with your life lifestyle schedule right now to to make money in the market okay either way your you the concept the strategy is the same it's the gap and you're looking for if you're shorting something to play on the weakness to play on the selling action you're looking to get the direction right. Your targets will vary whether you're day trading or doing swing trades or doing options, okay? But the most important thing that you have to do and think about when you're trading is getting the direction right and making money. It doesn't always pay to hold something to a dream, dream target. There are many, many, many areas to look at. The SPY today could have very well rallied all the way up to 250. I wouldn't be surprised at all if we got there tomorrow. It looks like there's nothing stopping that from happening. But if you had, you know, if you if you were, if you said, I'm not getting out of this day trade today until it reaches 250 or bust, it did not get there. You ran out of day, it hit the high of the day at 1230, base, 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 and held all afternoon, which actually tells me this, I should do a market video, this is unbelievably bullish. We, at, from 12.30 until 4 o'clock, the market traded in a tight range. That is a weak, pe people. I'm so good at reading we uh, 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 weakness that I've learned how to read uh, strength so well. This is so strong. The market traded in a narrow range in the spiders all day from 12.30 to 4 o'clock. I would be shocked if we don't run up tomorrow. No matter, it's almost like no matter what we do tomorrow, tomorrow is going to we're going to rally. We could gap down a little bit tomorrow, rally. We gap down a little bit into the bar and rally. We gap down a half the bar and rally. We gap up and rally. We grab a neutral and rally. I mean, unless we gap down and fall all the way down to something crazy, I can't see us not rallying tomorrow. For 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 almost four hours today, the market traded in a range of it looks like twenty cents, and that is not a sign of weakness. That is a sign of strength. So the market is digesting all of the buying coming in here. If people wanted to sell, they would have. Nobody sold. The market got bought and kept going and then stopped. Nobody got out. Do you see here what I mean? There's no panic here. None. Not only did the market gap up and have a nice move up and then a big move on the day went over the high, it, no one panics thinking that it wasn't going to keep going. They said, fine. Do, 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 and they're waiting for it to go to the magical number of 250 and blow. See, do you see how this is not weak? And this is actually weak. So this had to move up today, time of the day that this hit the high, same time as the market, 12.15, 12.30. Do you see how this didn't hold itself? It came in hard and then we closed. But do you see the difference between this and this? And I'm just looking at an intraday 15 minute because both these stocks, Teva and Spider, scapped up today. But the SPY is strong and Teva is not, it's weak. I don't really care the reason for Teva. Trials, this, that, news, somebody bought the company. I don't know. Who cares? I don't look at any of that stuff. 
I look at the gap, I look at the price action. I'm very good at reading price action. Does anybody have any questions at all so far of anything here today? I have a class this weekend if you're interested in, in, in taking it and learning. It's Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Monday is gonna be a repeat of day one. If you cannot do Saturday classes, this is it's a great time for you to take advantage of this because I normally always do a Saturday and Sunday class. So the class would be Sunday and Monday, okay? And the bottom line is that um, I usually don't do this. So if you, if, you, if you have a conflict with a Saturday class, if this is a good class to do it. You do Sunday and Monday, which would be day two and day one, or day one and day two, which is Saturday and Sunday. Day one, you learn all the 26 points, which is my system, how you would know that something like CMG or even the AMBA was a good stock to short and you learn the 26 points and, the, and, and you fill out a worksheet and you learn how to see where the gap is gonna go in the day. And then day two is you learn the entries, which we talked about a little bit here in the one minute in AMBA, but do you see how you the panic that comes into shorts is so attractive because you don't have to hold something for hours and hours and hours, which to be honest with you is a pain in the butt. And the people that were in the market this morning, when I called, they said, listen, if you want to get this up to the next number, to 249 or 250, if you want, if you don't get out of this here in the morning, you're holding it into the close. You're holding it waiting all day. And actually, whether you get out at 1215, 1230, or at 355, it pretty much was close to the high. So, you know, I'm not a patient person overall. I'm trying to get better about it. But honestly, 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 in an ideal world, all the trades in the morning go just like AMBA. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, boom, drop off the planet, fall out. Okay. So here's the dates for the class. Oops. And if anyone is interested in signing up, you can email me here. Okay. Yes, I will be on Fox Business on Wednesday. And it's exciting. I wish it would have been on today because I could have talked about the market. <laughs> I could have said the market looks like it's going to make another brand new all-time high today. Don't be surprised. And then boom, it did it at 1230. <laughs> Anyone have any questions about the class? Any specific stock chart you want me to look at? The market? Shorting, Eclipse Tricks, Eclipse Trader says, thanks Melissa, you're looking forward to the class. You're gonna do great. You've got the, you've got the general concept of trading gaps down, which, which helps, you have to learn my system. You have to learn my system, how do I get the picks, which you're gonna learn in the class, but you get the concept. And the concept, getting the concept, understanding the concept helps you take the trades. It helps you, number one, pay for the class, and then number two, take risk when you, when you take the trades. Because you have to risk your own money to take the trades, or you're not gonna make any money. You can't make money trading unless you take the trade and you actually put the trade on. And if you understand what's going on conceptually and you get it, then, then you'll be able to do it better. Whereas so many people that are in the market or risking money or trading, they just, they think that it's gambling, and it's not. And one of the reasons people do is because what we were just talking about, about the support and the resistance stuff. I mean, people people get upset when they see something like this. This uh, I'm just going to go back to the Tiva. They get very upset, and they say, gosh darn it, this thing I swore was lower. Now this sucker happened today, but it's still lower. Okay, this one little blippy happened today, that's it. It doesn't mean the stock isn't lower. Stocks do not go straight down every day, just like they don't rally straight up every day. You can't get tripped up on things. Things wiggle and jiggle, and that's why money management is a big part of trading too, because you gotta get out when you're up, and you have to watch your trades, and you have to make good money management decisions. I will be on TV at four o'clock on After the Bell on Wednesday, September 13th on Fox Business Network. CRM? And actually, I'm gonna be on TV Thursday too. But I didn't send out that email yet, but not Fox, another station. Uh, 
I have a busy week. CRM, what do you want to do with this here? What do you want to do with this guy here? T, what do you want to do with it? Are you in this here something or are you, what are you doing with it? T, are you there? There's nothing to do in this right now. If you're long the stock, you're up. It's just hit a target today, 98. If, if, if you're not long it, I wouldn't go long it here, and you definitely can't short it. You believe it's up, yes. Sell at 80 plus. I don't know what you mean sell at 80 plus. This is nowhere near 80. I don't see any signs this is going in the near future to 80. If you're not in it, there's no play here in this. The play here was long, you missed it. You can't go long here today, tomorrow. And there's nothing here to do with this. 100? 100? It could go to 100. I mean, you need something to get it there, though. 98.22. This gapped up today with the market, most likely, I'm guessing. I can look it up, but I'm just guessing this gapped up with the market. Ran up. 98.22. 100 is a number. Could it reach it? Yes. Again, the stock is in an uptrend. Is it going to reach it in a time frame that you could predict, like tomorrow? You'd have to watch it tomorrow and see. This isn't necessarily going to just run right up to 100 because, it, because that is a number that it's getting close to. It's been running up every day for two weeks. The market is bullish. It could keep going and get there tomorrow because the market's bullish. But otherwise, this needs a reason to get up to that number, which may or may not happen in, in a time that you can know to take the trade unless you can just wait it out. You know, when you're in options, you have a fixed time that it has to go. Day trades, too, because you got to be out before 4. you got to be you're in and out. If you're in October calls, I don't know what date in October you're in it. That is dependent on if it's the end of the month. If it's the end of the month, you've got six weeks or something like that. you got a long, 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 long time. Does this report between now and then? October 20th, you got more than a month. Does this have a report between now and then? You know, you got to look at that stuff too. Does this have an earnings report? Earnings season starts for th fourth quarter. So, you know, that's something else you got to look at too. I don't know if this gets right straight up immediately to 100. With the market continuing higher, which I do think happens tomorrow, this could make it. But close is close enough and it's almost there. If you're up in this trade, don't be a piggy. So there again, I'm giving you, you know, the same thing that I say to Galahad. No piggies. No piggy targets. If you don't get a run up again with this tomorrow and the market goes, then you know, you're taking a chance. This could stock could pull all the way back five points and may not make it then through the number or to the number, even by the 20th. This has had a good move. What do you want out of it? It's it's just moved ten points in a month. What do you want from life from this? Unless it has a reason to keep going. Something's going to happen here to make it to that number. Do you know what I'm saying? So don't be a pig. And for sure you're up in this because it's gone. It worked. The trade was good. Get out. In fact, this might have been it today. You know, you got you to look at this here. You got to watch this here. I mean, this, is, this was an unusual move for this to even happen today, but you had the help of the market. It got very, 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 very close. 215 it ran up. I would be very close watching this tomorrow. Okay. $120 on one contract? That's not bad. I wouldn't complain. See, if you had done this trade with more size, you'd be up more. What if you were up $1,200? What if you're up 12000 You and Galahad sound like you could be best friends. He always says, well, I'm only up 100 bucks. I'm only up 200 bucks. I'm only up 50 bucks. You know, 
$120 is $120. Add a couple zeros onto your size, you, you wouldn't be piggying it. You'd say, oh my gosh, I'm up $12,000. This just had a beautiful move. And you could say, I got it. I got 80% of the move. I did it. And you wouldn't be piggying it out. And you probably would have gotten out today. But because you're up 120 and you don't think it's enough, you're like, I got to get more. I got to get it more. What are you going to make? What are you going to make if this goes up to 100? And then I'm, gonna, I'm just going to answer my question and then let everybody go. What are you going to make? 175? You're going to lose a little bit of time value. If, what if it takes till Friday? You lose a little bit of time value every day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You'll lose time value. The stock will trade higher. It goes up another $1.75 and you lose four days in time value. What will you make? $165. $45 more and you sweated a bullet every day. You're not going to make a grand more if this goes to 100. Do you know what I'm saying? So this is where common sense, common sense, common sense, common sense, common sense, common sense. You know, in order to get to the point where you're trading with a lot of size, with good size, that you can make the moves and make the money, make thousands of dollars in a couple of minutes or in a couple of days or in a couple of weeks in the options trades, you got to think like someone that is making good, good decisions about money. You have to be thoughtful. I'm going to say this one last thing. It's very, very important here. You have to be thoughtful about what you're doing with your money. See, people think they're thoughtful because they're like, I'm going to think about doing Melissa's class for three years, for four years. I'm going to think about it for the rest of my life. I'm going to think about it every day until she decides not to do it anymore and then miss my opportunity. And that's probably going to happen with many, many people. And I'm not kidding you. Or the class will be 25 grand for a weekend. And you come to New York and you learn from me live. And people won't be able to afford to do it. Being thoughtful about your money is not being stingy. And it's not not spending it's just being smart. It doesn't mean not spending money. It doesn't mean hoarding your money either. It doesn't mean risking the farm either, okay? If you can't afford it and don't have a farm to even risk, it means, it means being smart. It just means being smart. I had a gentleman that I talked to two weeks ago that I spent a lot of time talking to and and, he, and, he, and he's done I don't know how many classes. I'm telling you a story. He's not here tonight, but he watches all my videos, so he'll hear it. He, 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 he can only afford to pay $500 for the class. I said, you are not in a position to be trading then. You are not in a position to be trading, okay? You have to have money to trade. The most important thing is learning it. Because if you know what to do and you can make $120 every day from now until the end of the year, how are many, many days are left in the year? Let's just, uh, October, November, December. So we got nine weeks, no, 12 weeks plus two, 14 weeks. 14 weeks times five days in a week, barring any holidays, which I'm not going to look up. You got about 70 more trading days, say, in the year. So if you could make... $120, your profit in this trade right now, you'd make $8,400 between now and December 31st. And if you could do that, then come next year, you could make $240 every day from January 1 to December 31st, 2018, and then you'd make even more. So that makes sense that you have to be smart. Being smart with money doesn't mean being a piggy, and it doesn't mean being stingy too, and it doesn't mean not spending. It means being thoughtful and saying, you know what? It makes sense that I probably should learn what to do before I take any trades or risk any money. It makes sense that I need money to trade before I do it, which is more than $500. It makes sense that if I hold this to the piggy target, I'm only gonna make 45 bucks and, if, you know, I'd rather get out because I am up $120. And if I could do this tomorrow and the next day 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 and, next day and get in the habit of doing just that, I'm going to make more in the long run. The stocks have moves. When the move is over, you get out. This is what Electra Galahad about all the time. You're, you're not married to this. You're not married to CRM, you're not married. Galahad, you are not married to Tesla. What a beautiful move here today. Don't marry this stock. It, 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 it doesn't want to marry you anyways, okay? Don't marry your trains. Go on a date with them. Have a good time. Have a fun. Go out to dinner. 
Maybe, maybe go out tomorrow night too if you want. Make it go out on the weekend. Spend a whole Saturday. Do not marry your trades. You're not living and dying by every trade you take. If you want to be a professional trader and think like a wealthy, successful person, you are getting the job done and you're getting in and you're getting the money and you're doing the task at hand and when the job's completed, you're off to the next job. You go get the job done and you do it. You got a job, you go to work. If you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're whatever, a nurse, you go get the job done, you come home, that's it. The job's done. It's the same thing when you're a trader. You do the job, you take the trade out, the job's done. Your job is not holding every trade to the piggy target. You'll ne you won't make it that way. You'll lose in the end, okay? Don't marry your trades. <laughs> Koala bear is laughing hysterically. I don't even have to come up with that. I'm getting silly now, I'm tired. I've been up all day. I've been up since early this morning. <laughs> and I need my beauty sleep for TV. All right, so. Galahad is arguing with me right now. He wants to have a, a theoretical to analytical discussion. He's saying maximize the position, Melissa. Oh, la, 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 la. All right, I'm going to go. We went over and Kathy has to go to bed. So great job, everybody that did the Tesla today. Great lecture. Very, very good. Doggy says, thank you, Melissa. You're the best. Looking forward to seeing you in Fox. Me too. <laughs> and so are my parents. All right, have a great night, everyone. Watch me on TV. All right, I'll see you later. Thanks for staying, Kathy. <laughs> don't marry your stocks, I don't love you. Actually, Tesla loved you a lot today. You might have you might have considered marrying Tesla. You might marry it tomorrow, too, because it looks higher even still tomorrow. But I'm telling you, you're still not going to marry it. No, I'm just saying, Kathy, I mean, I appreciate you staying over. Kathy's mad because she's saying that she's not going to bed at 545. <laughs> I was joking. All right, have a good night, everyone. Email me if you're interested in the Gab class. Okie doke. Wow. Okay, well, kind thanks goes to our presenter. Melissa Armo, that is www.thestockswitch.com. Emails to Melissa at sign the stock source, spelled S W O O S H dot com. Uh, I'll be posting it one more time, uh, the information to bookmark the Fox Business channel because they'll be, you know, obviously putting a link. And if you've given it a valid email, for today's registration when I send Melissa the list you will absolutely get follow-up information from her they're very very good and uh, her emails are extremely interesting she does play of the day I mean it's worth it alone if you can't take the class right now it's worth it alone just to get on her mailing list okay so you all have a great night ahead and good day trading tomorrow we will wish you all the best of luck Email her at melissa at the stockswish.com to get more information about the upcoming course. And like she said, she's going to be doing a very, very specialized one where she repeats the day one on that Monday. All right. Y'all have a great night ahead. Good day trading tomorrow.